Welcome to the Wrestling Fan Wrestling Show, you disciples of the Squared Circle. I'm the beefy boy, Shane O'Keefe, and gather round as we embark on a journey through the murky waters of TNA. I'm not talking about tits and ass, I'm not talking about Test and Albert, I'm talking about total non-stop action. In this week's episode, we're talking about forbidden love, illegitimate children... No! Oh, the father of this baby, AJ! Whoa, did you hear that? And bad influences, while the leading man is none other than the former cheerleader himself, the phenomenal Aj Styles, more commonly referred to as AJ Styles. Now, AJ was the undisputed crown jewel, not the Saudi Arabian pay-per-view, of a TNA. The beating heart of the promotion, he's been there pretty much from the start, he had to go through all that Vince Russo stuff, I think he was dressed as a chicken at one pay-per-view, but still, people respected him despite all that nonsense. So picture this, AJ Styles, the golden boy, was entwined in a web of forbidden love with none other than TNA's owner, Dixie Carter. Are we allowed to say the word Dixie anymore? Cause the Dixie chicks are just the chicks? <laughs> That's her name though, so YouTube, you're not allowed to cancel me, you son of a guns! And I don't think they're just whistling Dixie. This storyline was then entwined with a Claire Lynch saga. What's that? Well, I'm glad you feckin' asked, right? So AJ Styles was accused of fathering an illegitimate child with a mysterious woman. Oh, that's Peter Andre, isn't it? Mysterious girl. He was saying about Claire Lynch. Anyway, photos surfaced online capturing AJ Styles in a state of intoxicaciones, a visual spectacle to rival that of Triple H drugging Stephanie McMahon and getting married to her in Las Vegas. And as he said, he 100% consummated the marriage. Not did we, but how many times? Much to the applause of a 90s crowd. Times have changed. For the better. For the better. Anyway, all these revelations came in the form of a tag team duo known as Bad Influence. Christopher Daniels, former curry man, and Kazarian, former Kaz. They took the narrative to new heights. They unfurled the story that AJ was not only having an affair with Dixie Carter, but was also the secret data of Claire Lynch's child. I sympathize for the situation that you are in. It was nonsense and it was stupid, just like having a six-sided ring. TNA, you were so good at some times, but you were so bad at other times. How are you still a promotion to this day? If there was a nuclear fallout, the only things that had survived would be cockroaches, Indiana Jones in a fridge, and the image of Dixie Carter holding on to Hulk Hogan's leg, begging him not to leave the promotion. Or oh, the impact that had, because TNA became impact at one stage. Oh, comedy gold or bronze, whatever. The climax, a match with AJ Styles and Lynch ally Christopher Daniels Curryman. About where victory promised AJ a DNA test, yet defeat met acknowledging fatherhood. What? So if he lost, he just had to be the dad. That's the way everything, that's the way all paternity tests should go. Could you imagine being on Maury Povich and being like, you are the father because you lost in a wrestling match, in a six-sided ring. That's the way America works now. Then boom, another plot twist, just like M. Night Shyamalan. This is scary, huh? All right, let's hear some theories about why this might be happening. Claire Lynch herself stepped into the spotlight with a shocking revelation that the pregnancy was nothing but smoking mirrors. Whoa! You're only smoking mirrors to me! A twist that left fans scratching their balls and going, what the f? Why do I watch wrestling? Why do I watch wrestling at all? This is no better than EastEnders. Doom, 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 doom. It was a particular low point for TNA. Kurt Angle, who is a hero of TNA after refusing to do a drug test in WWE and going on to be a fucking madman in the Florida-based promotion, he came out and deemed the Claire Lynch saga one of the worst ever. And it was one of the worst ones. And for Kurt to say that, like, he's not immune from all this absurd shite. After all this, he went back to WWE where he had met his own long-lost son that he didn't know about in the form of Jason Jordan. And everyone was like, 
why is it Jason Jordan and not Chad Gable? He kind of looks like Chad Gable. But then you think back to when Kurt Angle was in a rivalry with Booker T and his wife Charmel, and he pretty much admitted his penchant to interracial relationships, if that's what you can call whatever he says here. Editor, put it in. What I want with your wife Charmel, I want, I want to have that kind of, that kind of. Sex. Now, the fallout, Judy Riley, the thespian behind Claire Lynch, she said a lot of wrestling fans unleashed a torrent of abuse to her online, and and that's not on. Let's all be nice and civil to each other. Except me to you. Fuck you. Okay, maybe I got carried away there, but I'm blaming Curry Man and Kaz, because they're bad influences. And speaking of bad influences, here's a word from today's sponsor. Friar Ferguson, sick of being a bollocks, well why not join the monkhood or friarhood, whatever that is, and cast aside the darkness of traditional wrestling and embrace the enlightenment of one Friar Ferguson, with his bald head adorned with a horseshoe of hair and painted on eyebrows, he's a bastion of light in a dark, dark world. You can join the Fire Ferguson fan club today, in which you will be the first person to join that club. So don't miss your chance to bask in the radiant madness of Friar Ferguson. Join the fan club now and receive exclusive blessings, divine dances, and maybe even a sprinkle of a fat man's arse in your face. Don't need to sign up for OnlyFans for that. Terms and conditions apply. There's lots more wrestling-related, religion-based gimmicks that you could choose. Mordecai being one. Now, back to the lunacy. Because... Friar Ferguson used to be Norman the Lunatic as well. Did anyone get why I said Bastion as well? Because he was Bastion Booger. What the... For, right, let's talk about Bastion Booger. He was... This was disgusting. This has no reason to be on television. Vince, what the fuck were you thinking, bro? Anyway, after years of service, eventually AJ Styles left TNA. He went to New Japan Pro Wrestling, became the leader of the Bullet Club, and then joined WWE in a... Debut to remember at the Royal Rumble, where once he walked out on stage, Kevin Dunn, the producer of WWE, did not even get the shot. No, he missed the shot. Yes, he kept the camera on Roman Reigns. Just like he missed Edge's first spear in 11 years, once again at the Royal Rumble. Kevin Dunn, what the hell was that? Oh, they love us, don't they? They fucking love us behind the scenes in WWE. There you have it, our first foray into the madness that was total non-stop action. Side note, I loved TNA growing up. They had some awesome stuff, but like everything in wrestling, it's a variety show and you're going to get some nonsense thrown in there. Normally from the mind of Vince Russo or Vince McMahon. People screaming my name! And this channel is going to cover every single one of them. No! Sound off in the comments what you would like the Wrestling Fan Wrestling Show to cover. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and smash that notification ring-a-ding-a-ling bell. Ding, ding, ding. It's like a wrestling bell. Do you get it? It's like a wrestling bell. Everything is wrestling. My whole life is wrestling. I need to sleep. I need to sleep. Help me. Anyway, remember, it's all fun and games until someone gets hit in the face with a steel chair. Stay safe. Stay sane.